Hey family, welcome to family night at the tip. And um, we were already designated doing family stuff. It's our kid's birthday, but tonight is important in uh, family night. So, um, uh, LDQ, <laughs> he doesn't do these videos with me. Um, so this is good. I told him it's the beginning, but it's not the end. Um, I want to start off first with just the scripture, because when we talk about family night and how the Lord asks us to design our house and building a culture of family, that family is not, not just married couples or moms with children or fathers with children, but it's, it's, he's talking about building the body of Christ that the culture of our ministry feel is used to family. Everybody belongs. Everybody's a part. Everybody plays a part. We are the body of Christ. So I want to first just give this snippet of scripture. There came then his brethren and his mother. This is Jesus. Uh, he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the scripture says, then Jesus, he, there came his brethren and his mother and standing without sent on him calling. So his mother and father showed up where Jesus was preaching. And the people said, hey, Jesus, there go your mother and father. And the multitude said unto him, and they sent unto him, behold, Jesus, your mother and your father, they're seeking you. But then Jesus stopped and he answered them saying, who is my brother or my mother? And he looked round about at them that sat around him and said, behold, my brother. So then he looked out at the multitude of people who he was ministering to. And he said, behold, my brother, my mother and my brother. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister. I just want to elaborate on that a little bit so you can understand the family culture that God is building. We know we have natural family of brothers, sisters, um, uncles, and etc. <clears throat> but because you're, the hand of God is on your life and because we have been called to do a work, then that builds a different bond because we're hired or we've been adopted by God. Hallelujah. So we've been adopted by God to do a work. So there's an understanding that happens in the body of believers that we get sacrificed. We get why we do what we do. We get why we can't do some things that our natural families do. We get it because we have been adopted by God in his family to do his will. So I want to clear that up and make you understand this family now is not talking about a carnal family. It's talking about a spiritual family and how are we going to continue to build that culture of a spiritual family within our church? Whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're divorced, whether you are a widow, whether you are, have, give me some more. I don't know. All of the above. All of the above. You're part of his family, which is the body of Christ. And we are family because of him. So I want to give that clarity. Okay, so what we want to talk about is um, in talking about family and building. Uh, first of all, I was still blessed by uh, Minister Dexter, and, and it was actually already moving into some things that he and I were talking about just like this week, or now it's last week. And it was talking about um, praying, planning, and then posturing yourselves in faith. This has kind of been our rhythm without giving it like order, but this has been our rhythm for now 16 years of being married, that we pray on what we believe God want our next to be. And then we plan on that next because faith without works is dead. And then we begin to posture ourselves in faith um, because if we, we believe he gave it, then it's going to happen. Um, something that he said uh, in the father's interview was that there's no competition in our home. So when you're building family or when you're building the plan of God for your life, um, you relax and you resolve to him. And the first thing we do is we pray it through. So I'm going I'm to I'm I'm ask you, honey. So what are something I, I know I got to do it by interview because he ain't going to just volunteer information. So what are some things that you would say we've had to pray our way through and then um, start the planning? What are you talking about planning? All the above. Any subject you want to use, Daddy, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy you're sitting here with me. <laughs> oh, my God. We pray way through everything. Everything. Buying a house, buying a car. What school the kids are going to go to. Um, you know, finances, budgets, you know, everything. Everything. So, 
like I could go so many directions because that's kind of been our deal. Um, I guess I could start with our house. So, um, um, our first home when we were still engaged and we believe God was putting us together. Okay. And now we get ready to get married. Um, she believed I knew. <laughs> Give me some shit on that. Yeah, on camera. Okay. Um, <laughs> he had, um, no, for real. He had, um, you know, we saw these homes. There were, there was a new, whole new area. And so we went by there just, you know, just kind of like for fun to me to say, oh, let's see what happened in this, uh, this subdivision. So he knew he didn't want, he knew he wanted a cul-de-sac home. He knew, um, what kind of house we wanted. Um, but then we were believing God. I'm, I'm saying it's so good. Cause then when he knew we were going to marry, um, I was believing God that we would have the children, Miles and Jasmine, because at the time, you know, they weren't living with him full time. So then that changed our thought process and said, okay, well, we need a house big enough for them. So literally, this was crazy because literally every time we had to go in to talk to these people, either he had gotten paid or I had gotten paid or whatever, where we had what was necessary to pay down to be able to keep it moving. Now, I think what's crazy to me, and I'm not recommending people do this, but like we knew we wanted a house, but it wasn't like we had planned, pre-planned saying, okay, a year's time, we'll do this. We just really honestly prayed our way through and did it by faith um, because we believed it. So sure enough, the cul-de-sac was available. Oh yes, here's one right here. Oh, this is brought this land. And it was like, okay. And then it became, um, what size? So by faith, because not knowing how we were going to finish it by faith, we started writing our names in the wood. They talk about that. <laughs> you just did yes. It. Okay. We'll elaborate a little more. We wrote our names in the wood. In the frame of the, of the house, that's what you want me to say. And why did that's we do we that? Because it was our house in faith, you know, faith without works is dead. So we named it, claimed it, and we walked in it. So. That's my culture. This is his first. I'm a double the espresso in a minute. Okay. Um, my culture. This is my y'all know he got to get used to this. It's okay. Um, so that's what we did. So we started writing our names in the wood. When the construction guys was building the house, we would show up and just pray through the house and write our names in the wood, claiming the house. Um, then what did we start doing with the kids, with Rissy, or Rissy, which um, Jasmine and Miles? We took them to the, basically it was just cement and framing them. You know, I remember taking them in there and they was picking out their rooms. As difficult as it was for them to do, know understand what rooms were going to be where and all that stuff they still ran through this why was it difficult because there was no walls up no windows no nothing it just it was again it was just you had to use your vision you know you had to use your your Im imagination because there was nothing up and it was like oh you know the wall's going to be here the bathroom's going to be here you know so we had to explain it to them so they chose their room when it was just framing so, you know, if you if you believe or you believe in God or have faith in God and what he's telling you, you don't wait to choose what he has for you. You mm -hmm. just go for it. You know what I'm saying? We I knew it was gonna be our house. I mean, you know, so it's like pick your room because it's gonna happen. And you're still praying your way, you know, all that stuff, you know. You're still praying your way through it, but you know, you still have to you know, continue to, you know, to, to believe. If you ever stop your believing in the midst of your prayer, why, why are you praying? You got to continue to believe. Hallelujah. You got to continue to believe. You can't stop believing. You know what I'm saying? The two go together. Prayer and believing go together. So, um, and then needless to say, it happened. Our budget, um, by the time we got all the way to um, the final closing, then we really started pulling our money together. Um, we were married May 7th. Yeah, we can go back. Go back. 
Yeah. Well, okay, I'm going I'm to build it up. So we May 17th, we were married, um, and we moved into our house by, like, June 20th, somewhere around there. Um, the praying part was asking the Lord, is this the neighborhood? We started going around that neighborhood at night um, to just see what the atmosphere was like at night. Um, we started shopping in that neighborhood just to see what it was like. Now, mind you, this was all happening when we were still engaged because we weren't married yet. So, but by faith that this is going to happen, we started visiting, um, learning about the schools. Um, and these are things I know that are commonplace for people to do, but sometimes you don't. I think what blessed me is that we had no idea that God was going to bless us with more children. So this was all... Yeah, he, okay. <laughs> Great man of faith. This was, okay, so we got two separate, <laughs> <coughs> we got two separate stories going on here, um, um, but they were both by faith. That um, that God was going to posture him to be able, well, he believed God was going to allow us to have more children. I didn't. I truly did not. Oh, I was just, faith. yeah, yeah. I was just grateful for Jasmine and Miles. Those were my children, period. So um, what's crazy is the house that we chose, it had the ability, it had this, this playroom, but in the model, it could be a playroom or a bedroom. And he said, you know, this is pretty cool because, um, you know, for more kids, we could close this off and make another room. But in my mind, I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm just, you know, Jasmine and Miles, I have plenty of room to play. So the, we prayed our way to understand this was what we wanted. Um, and then the planning was constantly putting our monies together. Something that I'm grateful about in our home is that both of us work hard and neither one of us mind working hard. And both of us get that it's going to take sacrifice. And I think when building your life, whether you are single, seriously, or whether you are a couple, um, you have to know it's going to take sacrifice to get to where you're going. And so sometimes people have these, their, your priorities are way off. And that's the only reason why you don't get what you're trying to get. You can't be in a season of designer clothes and eating out all the time and those kind of things when you're in a season of building a business or a sacrifice. So sacrifice, you got to know what do you need to sacrifice to reach your goal. That's part of your planning. Your planning is to meet my goal, to get to where I'm trying to go. There's going to take a sacrifice. And for a husband and wife, the main thing is praying together that you all are in agreement. You have to be in agreement. This is our next. Because when you are married, it's not about you no more. It's not about just your dreams and just your aspirations. I'm going to pause with that. This is why when you're single, run, run, because now you got to be in alignment with God. Is this the will of my life with God? And so run while you're young with your own vision, your own dreams, your own aspirations, because when you marry, this is so good. You got to find the one that God is saying, this is in alignment with him so that the two of you won't clash on vision for your life and dream. That's that's that planning process. So when you plan, you got to understand sacrifice is part of the planning. Um, how is it going to happen is part of the planning. Um, faith without works is dead. So, so if I believe this is when we've gotten cards, everything, we, he's, he's the one that'll do the research. That's part of planning It's research. So He'll do the research on the communities, the neighborhoods. We do it on cars. Um, what is the what is the longevity of it? What is the resale value of it? Um, every single big move we've ever made, he does the research. So we're talking about our prayer to first believe God, this is what you want for us. Then the planning is what is gonna what's gonna be the sacrifice to make this happen. And if you're not willing to sacrifice, it may not happen. Cause it's going to take sacrifice. And then what is the preparation for that? What is your research? So, so I think when it comes to businesses, which is a whole nother thing, honey, talk about that. Talk about businesses. Talk about your, when you launched out into chef Q and, and when God told us to do it, we believe it. Talk about that. Wow. I mean, look, 
back up though. First thing is what's going on? Yeah, I don't know what I said. Who's that? It's a hand. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. Hey, it's on. All right. Um, the back up though. I mean, you know, you got to pray about everything, right? There's nothing too little to pray about. There's nothing too small to go to God and pray about. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes, you know, we feel like, oh, that's nothing. I'm just going to move in that. I'm just going to do that. Ah, back up. So now pray about it, you know, um, because, you know, sometimes we think, oh, we've done that. You bought a car before. You bought a house before. So there's nothing to pray about. Just, you know, do it. But now you still need to pray about it, right? And then as the man of God said on Sunday, um, goals, um, goals is where you want to be. Goals is a picture of where you want to be. But planning is how do you get there. Mm -hmm. So we can have a desire or a goal to live in a neighborhood, to have a house, to have a certain car to put our kids in certain schools, but if we don't plan it, you would never get there. So I think it's important, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to make sure that you're in agreement with your spouse. And if you're a single mom or a single parent, single, you know, um, father, then you still have to be in agreement with God and what he's mm -hmm. calling you to do. Mm -hmm. So there's still an agreement that happens, mm -hmm. you know, um, but, when it comes to businesses, I mean, I think any, every business book I've ever read, read and, you know, thing that says you, you, when you write your business plan, you write your business plan for, for increase, for growth, mm -hmm. for a 10 year projection, for a five year projection, for a three year projection. And every year you are, you're supposed to increase your business plan and revenue. So basically that, that's just about forecasting that you're going to make a little bit more each year. Basically, you're, you know, you're, you're believing, again, that there's that word, you're believing that your business is going to be successful year after year. And I think the thing in our in marriage is that we don't write, we don't write our marriage the same way. Wow. You know, we don't write our marriages to increase in love, wow. increase in faith, increase in prosperity. We don't write our marriages, we don't write our family life that way. Wow. We just write our family just to be there just to be stagnant, right? We don't believe our families for the same increase we would have in our businesses. You know, so for me, I think my family is supposed to increase just as I wrote with my business plan, it's supposed to increase. You know, so it's, it's, it's family is not a business, but family can increase like business. I mean, I, I, I remember telling you, you know, if you like me, you gotta like my two kids. And you told me I gotta like all your kids. And that was an increase. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the church. That's exactly what I said. You know, you know, I said, you got two, I got 200. You know, that was an increase and it's still increasing. So, you know, I think, I think it's important for, you know, you know wherever you are, you gotta, your family should increase. You know, it's okay to start out, you know, um, oh, in a studio. Yep. But this is where you live for a month. The next, the next increase is what? The next increase from there is what? So I think, you know, in planning for family, I know you asked me about business, but in planning for family, I think we have to write in that increase just like you do a Love business it. plan. Love it. Right? And then the business plan is using realistic numbers, forecasting, and you have to, you know, maybe you have to readjust your numbers, but in family life, you're going to have to, sit down every year, every six months, and go over what your family style or lifestyle is with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby, we're planning on doing this and this and this. Um, we're going to readjust. Now we got to do this. Because sometimes things happen, right? This is a new couple just got married. And, you know, they their three-year goal is to travel to Europe. They want to travel all around Europe. But they have a baby. So now you got to sit down and readjust your plans. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. You know, but that's the thing about family life is it's it's fluid, it's liquid, it, it, it it's gonna go with the way life is. You still praying and planning, right? That Europe trip, that Europe trip is not off, not out of your mind, not out of your desires. It's just maybe pushed back until the baby gets two years old. You know, that's still planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's still planning, mm -hmm. right? Because the desire is there, and he said he's giving you the desires of your heart. So that's still, 
you know, your desire was to have a house, you know, so I wanted to make sure that I could provide that for you and not an apartment. So I want to tag what he's saying about the girls. It's so powerful that in family, it's the same thing. You do need to reassess where are you in your marriage? Where are you in? How about even the increasing of each other? Because even as single people, you've got to re-examine, is your walk getting better? Is your relationship with Christ, get, is it an increase in your relationship with Christ? Are you growing? Um, are you still wrestling in some things you always have? So this is so good because part of that increase should be in everything we do, whether we are single, whether we're married, whether we are single moms or is my relationship with Christ increasing? Is my growth increasing? Am I maturing? Am I developing? What am I developing from? What am I maturing from? In marriage, wives and husbands, some things that you argued about 20 years ago, that shouldn't be an argument anymore. Somewhere you all should have settled to some things to agree who can do what best so you can move to the next. We were somewhere the other day and I looked at him and I just said, life, it, uh, when you marry, this is the person, this is your dog. We can already do life together. That's what we can already do. We can already do life. And it's important that he's fulfilled in life and I'm in, I'm fulfilled in life because we got to do this together. But again, when you're single, if you grab hold of God and God shows you how to have a great life with him, you almost got to max out until he sends you your companion. In other words, I've grown to as much contentment I can get with walking with Christ and the next level of my contentment or fulfillment, it comes from a carnal relationship. Not spiritual, it's a carnal relationship. Marriage is a carnal relationship that should be healthy. Meaning, he he does for me that, I'm sorry, God ain't go give me kids. One. Yeah, really. It's an example. See, I'm not going to feel Jesus like that, but I feel him here. I don't, I, I don't know if that worked. I had to do it. The last part, because I want to, we got the last part is posture. I don't know. Is posturing yourself in faith. That part is huge because if, if you prayed on it and you know this is the will of God and you have plans, you've made preparations, you, 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 even if you have to fast about some of these things, you've fasted on it, you've made sacrifices, you've given it to God. Now it's the posture in faith for you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, you wait on the promise. Hallelujah. Child, I have learned. You could be as frustrated as you want. You can say as many things. you. It's not going to change God's set time and appointed time to make vision come to pass. But you have to stay postured in faith that he said it. I did what he asked me to do, so now I'm just thanking him. You check on that blessing, and you keep putting praise on it. You check on what you've asked him, and you keep putting thanksgiving on it. That's how you stay postured in faith. When negative things come out, you rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and you stay postured in faith. You want to add anything to that? No, posture just means position. You got to stay in position. You got to remain Remain speaking the, the good. Remain, you know, like you said, blocking out. You know, I'm saying like, like, you know, if you ever play, you know, basketball, and they talk, they talk about rebounding. You got to get position. Rebounding is all about position. You know, what I'm saying you got to block your man out. So if you remain passionate in faith, all you're doing is blocking out all the evil, all the evilness from from the enemy's camp. Mm -hmm. You know, that mean sometimes that may mean people. True. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because there are people that's gonna come. They don't come to, you know, derail you from your faith. If, if God is telling, you know, the sisters out there that, you know, they're about to get married, there, there'll be someone to come in your life and say, girl, you don't need no man. Hmm. That's totally opposite what God is right. telling you. So you got to block that person and that, those words out. You got you, you to remain postured in faith. Position yourself in everything God is telling you to do. You know what I'm saying? It's it's it's. And it's, I'm, 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 let me just tag it because the same thing with our young men that you know this whole myth that I really want to get annihilated. 
that, you know, it's hard to find a good woman or it's hard to build family or marriage. That, so, that. that That's what brothers have said, that, you know, they can't trust and all that. That's, yeah, you got to get rid of that because ain't no way you're going to give your heart. What you want to say about that? Oh, I, I, who, who's saying that? There's some brothers, young brothers that have said that. Anywho, I'm saying you that. have to rebuke negative things. You do, because you know, again, 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 it's it's if you're getting that, you're not you're not in the right camp. You're not in the right faith camp. You're not right. in the right you know what I'm saying? You're not, That's real you're good. not positioning you ain't in the right yourself. faith camp. Yeah. You know, you're not positioning yourself in the right places. Because in the world and in the street, their faith is in things of evil. It's, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's their faith. It's their belief. They're, give me an example. They're posturing themselves. Oh, let me give you an example. Well, if you hang out at... <laughs> I mean, seriously. So, so let's, let's say, take for instance, if you're talking about positioning yourself in things in, in, in faith, right? Posturing yourself in faith, right? If you got friends that like to hang out and club and do all that stuff, then their belief is that they're going to get a female in that environment. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's for one night or whatever, you know, but that's, they, they parson themselves. And the, and the people in that, So they, then they show up for it, they dress they show, they for dress it. They dress for it, all that. They do whatever they it takes. that's what they're going to. To get that, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the same thing with over here. Right. And things of God. Right. There's some things that he called us to do yeah. to be postured to get Hallelujah. our woman. And if we don't adhere to that or do that, the women are not going to come to us. Good women. Period. Mm -hmm. Because we're over here. There's a certain standards that we have to uphold over here than over there. Men of God. Yes. So we can't come with the standards from the world and bring okay. those to the church okay. and say, I'm okay. ready for a woman. Okay. You want to be a husband, but you're not doing husband things. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You want to be a leader, but you're not leading in, in, in nothing. You're not leading your own life. You haven't prayed about nothing. You haven't planned your own life. And now you're talking about, I'm, I'm positioning myself, I'm parting myself for, in faith for a wife, mm -hmm. but you haven't done those first two things. Mm -hmm. it, it's not going to work mm -hmm. because you're coming over it, that's why the Bible talks about being born again. You can't bring those things from the world and the club and hanging out over here to church and apply that principle mm -hmm. to the house of God. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. won't work. And would you say that that's would you say that that is something that you have to grow into and grow out of? Because because some men don't have to be in the club, but they still have not, and women but still have not come into the maturity of what honor looks like. You get what I'm saying? Now you, that I, I have think, Christ. I think, I think it's, 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 it's where you spend your time. You're going to become part of that environment, right? Okay. I, mean, I, I think the more time you spend around people that I, I was told, I was told to find someone who's doing bigger and greater things than me. Mm-hmm. And then to learn and, 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 and jump in their back pocket, learn from them, mm -hmm. and mimic, so to speak, some of the things they're doing. Mm -hmm. This was told to me in business and in the church. Mm -hmm. Right? In business, you're supposed to pick one of those companies in your field that's doing greater and bigger things. And you're supposed to position yourself after that company. I remember listening to a man of God pray. Now, I... I, I I used to get down there and fall asleep when I try and pray. You know what I'm saying? I used to, <laughs> in the beginning. I used, I used to, but but I used to hear this man of God pray, and I and I said, you know, I want to be able to pray like that, go into a realm of prayer mm -hmm. like this gentleman was. Now, you know, his calling is not my calling, mm -hmm. right? But there was a desire of me to be able to hold a prayer, if you will, or pray the length of time and okay. just to intercede and just to go in yeah. like that. It didn't come overnight. Mm -hmm. It didn't come overnight. It was, but I, but I couldn't leave prayer in order to get that. I had to stay in prayer. Sure. Oh, that's really good. You didn't I, stop praying. I, I couldn't stop praying yeah. in order to yeah. achieve yeah. that goal in it. prayer. I love it. I love it. So you I can't, you asking God for something, but you stop doing what you're asking him to give you. you left your posture. You, you can't leave it. And then, then expect it. Mm 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there you go. So as we're moving forth in family and legacy, building young men, building young women, building marriages, building our single moms, building our single dads, know that, number one, the body of Christ, it is your family. And we're your family in that we get the process of purification. We get the process of keeping our vessels as honorable vessels before Christ. We get the process that we can't just do what we want to do, but by all things through prayer and supplication, we make our requests made known unto God. And then we get it that some things we have to sacrifice because this is the planning and the preparation and research. And then above all, where the world would say, let it go, it's not a big deal. Is staying Pasha. I even want to minister to young couples or couples that maybe your spouse is not married or excuse me, not saved and not a believer. And you're believing God to love them and that God will save them. Stay in posture. You stay in posture of faith that you are loving them in spite of their circumstances, that you are loving them unconditionally. Judgment comes from God. Judgment, chastening comes from God. He commanded us to love and love endures all things. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love thinketh no evil. Love doesn't keep a calculation of how many times I've forgiven you. So all the way around, when we are in posture of love for even our unsaved loved ones, then that's up to God to be able to save them. But we stay postured in faith that God's going to save them, that your husband or your wife is going to be walking with you in the house of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I feel the presence of the Lord on that, that your husband or your wife is going to be in ministry with you. So don't be discouraged. You stay in posture in prayer. You start praying and praising God every day you come to church and you don't ever stop asking them. Don't ever stop asking. Hey, sweetheart, I'm doing such and such as you want to go. And don't get upset when they say, no, I ain't going to shit. All right, kiss them. All right, baby, it's okay. Thank you for letting me go. That's how you do that. You start saying to your unsafe loved one, your husband or your wife, honey, thank you for allowing me to go to the house of God. Honey, thank you. And honey, thank you. So the saints had asked about you or whatever you need to do, but love them through that and stay in posture that God's going to save them. Well, we've run out of time. Um, thank you. Tonight is going to be great. Thank you for the Las Nikki family and all the saints that's holding it down. You all have your own hot discuss discussions on things you got to pray through, plan through, and have your posture of faith, believing God that it is going to come to pass. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight. I thank you for our family of This Is Pentecost. Thank you for what you're building in legacy of family. Whether we are single, whether we are married, Father, we thank you for how you are joining us together because we are your children that are striving to do your will. I ask that strength be upon every son and daughter tonight. I ask that your anointing will rest upon every family and every marriage tonight. I ask that our children will be healed and whole and that we will walk as one according to your will. Father, I thank you and we declare it so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you. He was pretty good, huh? He was pretty good. <laughs> wow.